previewing the state golf championships that are coming up Friday and Saturday, and we've got uh, things going on around the state. Class 2A will be actually hosted by Upton, but at the Newcastle Country Club this weekend, joined by Upton head coach and athletic director Bo Garcia. Bo, thanks for taking a few minutes to chat with me. I guess as you see it, and I know that you guys don't always see every 2A team, particularly a couple of outliers uh, that are in the middle and western part of the state, but how would you kind of handicap 2A as you – get towards this weekend around the states? Well, I think it's, uh, we're going to have a couple new team champions, I think. Um, on the girls' side, we were we won last year, but we lost three girls. We only have one this year, so we're definitely going to have a new team champion on the girls' side. And, and uh, you know, Thermops won it so many years in a row, you can't count them out yet. But uh, you got Kimmer coming right on there with, with a pretty strong team. And then uh, – our boys and, and TR boys are have got a few pretty good players too. So uh, it would be fun to watch that boys' side and, and see who comes out on that girls' side now. Individually, who are some of the top players you think that, that have a chance this weekend to fare well? Well, I, I think the boys' side, it's got a, kind of a long list. There's uh, Logan Timberman and Bridger Bruce from Upton, uh, Carter Wood and Austin Christensen from Kimmerer, uh, Camden Rolls from Laws, Caden Overfield from Thermopolis, Braxton, uh, Tremaine, and Easton Lewis from TR. I think those guys are all shooting in the 80s, and they all got a legit shot. Just come – depends on who plays who plays that day. And then on the girls' side, um, I think it might come down to a three, three-person three race with Sierra Moore from Upton and uh, Savannah Peterson from Sundance and, and Lily Johnson. And then, again, <laughs> see who comes out and ready to play. It could be – a dark horse in there. Yeah, it's one of those that's very interesting to me because we've seen so many teams and names, as you mentioned, at the top of 2A golf for a long time. And, you know, had the the back and forth uh, in the last couple of years between your girl and the and the Sundance girl. And so, and then obviously the Johnson boys kind of dominated things from the yeah. top. Kind of a breath of fresh air in 2A. You guys are playing not necessarily on your home course at Upton, but at Newcastle Country Club. Tell me a little bit about that course and, and how you think it's going to be set up. Well, uh, we played there early in the year. We had a tournament, try to get some teams out on the course and, and uh, it's green and grass was long and the roughs were flush with grass. Um, and it has died down a little bit in the rough area. So those parts are, are uh, going to find, it'll be a little easier to find some golf balls. Um, we've asked them to mow down some spots because we got uh, just under 80 kids on a nine hole course, it's going to be a <laughs> pace of play is going to be an issue. So um, we've asked them to mow down a little bit of the roughs and everything to help us speed up play, find some balls. Um, they've done an excellent job taking care of the course over the year. And uh, it's, it's going to be in pretty good shape. I hope to, to host this, the weather looks like it's going to hold out for us. So <laughs> might be the best weather wise we've had for the fall season here. Uh, talk a little bit about the course itself and what what kind of challenges it presents. Are we talking water, some big hills here and there? Uh, no, uh, not a not a lot of water. It's a it's a pretty good course to walk. There's a couple carries for the boys that they're going to have to get over some length on the drive. Um, some of the, they could put some pins in some pretty tough spots. Uh, overall, it's it's not too bad. There's a lot of penalty area, so you're gonna have to navigate some of that stuff. Uh, okay some dog leg left and things like that, that you're going to have to just get around and, and play smart. Um, if you can keep the ball in the fairway, then you're, you're close to the fairway. You're going to be able to navigate the course pretty well. Um, there are some challenge holes, uh, some long par threes in there that, that can, we're going to try to move those up maybe a little bit again for pace of play, but uh, so it's, it's a great course. I think it's, it's in pretty good shape right now. We hosted it there again in 2018 and, uh, everyone seemed to like it there. So it's it's been pretty good so far for us. And real quick, with it being just a nine-hole course, do you change the tee boxes and the 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 pins as, as you kind of turn from one nine to the second nine? The tee boxes will change. We'll keep the pins the same for the day, and then okay. they'll change for, for Saturday. But tee boxes, well, we got uh, two sets of tee boxes for both boys and girls. Add a couple lengths of different little angle here or there. Uh, to try to mix things up. So, right. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a challenging course. I'm glad the weather's uh, going to hold out. I think that's what I've been talking with uh, 
with Ben and Joe about in terms of the the courses in Worland and Sharon and everybody kind of concerned, but it always seems to be the state golf weekend where we may get that first uh, <laughs> first uh, weather, I guess, around Wyoming in the, yeah. in the fall sports. But hopefully it'll be out of here by by maybe after the practice rounds on Thursday or something since you guys are further up north. But, hey, I appreciate you taking time and chat with me and uh, have fun hosting this weekend. I appreciate it. Thanks for the interview.